Before there can be any harvest, there always has to be a season of gardening. This is clearly the case with agriculture, of course, but it's also true with evangelism. Jesus himself talked about seasons of sowing that precede seasons of reaping in John 4, 35 through 38. In this video, I'd like to give you a couple more tips on how to effectively share your faith. Remember, our goal is to share in intentional relationships with people so that we can spread the light of Christ into somebody else's life. I'm naturally shy, so I don't exactly go, go around engaging with people here and there about faith or really anything. I keep to myself. However, I would be happy to share my faith with somebody that I already know. And I would imagine there are people out there just like me. One of my favorite books about sharing the faith is called Tactics by Greg Kokel. And that's what this book is really good for. I'd like to read the preface from the second edition of the book to kind of give you an idea of what the book is about and give you a different mindset of how he approaches evangelism. Before someone ever comes to Christ, there is always a period of time, a season, if you will, where they are thinking about the gospel, mulling it over, and wondering whether it might be true. They might be putting out little probes by asking questions. They might even be fighting back a bit, but still they're wondering, maybe praying secretly, God, are you real? When this happens in somebody's life, it's an opportunity for you and me to do some spade work, what Francis Schaeffer calls pre-evangelism. As I look back on decades of serving the Lord through writing, speaking, doing radio, making TV appearances, I realized that my work consisted primarily of gardening, not harvesting. When I realized that good gardening is key to a good harvest, my approach began to shift. If I could be a better gardener, I thought, and also teach others to garden better, then eventually the harvest would be better too. It's pretty simple. I will admit I'm not a gardener. I mean, I live in Texas, it's hot, I don't want to get out and garden. I'm more of an inside kind of person, but I think the analogy works really well. If you remember the statistic I mentioned last week, that non-believers have to hear the gospel presented an average of 7.6 times before they receive it, it begins to make sense. Too often, we're so focused on the harvest when that is just a tiny part of the gardening or witnessing experience. If I want to have fresh tomatoes, I have to prepare the soil, plant the seed, water the seed, and wait for it to grow. Other than preparing the soil and planting the seed, this is an ongoing process. I can't just water the plant once and expect it to grow. I have to continually water and look after it and nurture it. This is the same thing that happens in the church. If we're seeking to make disciples in the church, we have to continually invest in them. If we're trying to witness to somebody to bring them to Christ. It can't be a one-time thing. We have to continually nurture the relationship. Just as it's important for Christians to be a part of a Bible-believing church where they can hear the word so they can grow, unbelievers don't come to faith by hearing it one time. They have to be nurtured by somebody so they can grow as well. That's not to say that we need to beat them over the head with the gospel 7.6 times until they're ready to receive it, but we need to get them thinking about spiritual matters. Greg Kokel continues to write, It may surprise you to hear this, but I never set out to convert anyone. My aim is never to win someone to Christ. I have a more modest goal, one you might consider adopting as your own. All I want to do is put a stone in someone's shoe. I want to give that person something worth thinking about, something he can't ignore because it continues to poke at him in a good way. Think of it this way. When a batter gets up to the plate, his goal isn't to win the game. It's an extended process that takes a team effort. He just wants a chance to get a hit. If he connects, he might get on to base and into scoring position, or he might drive another batter home, even if he never makes it to first base. In the same way, I never try to hit the winning run. I just want to get up to bat. That's all. In some circles, there's pressure for Christian ambassadors to close the sale. Get right to the meat of the message. Give the simple gospel. If the person doesn't respond, you've still done your part. Shake the dust off your feet and move on. Think about that analogy for a second. What happens when a stone gets in your shoe or even some sand? If you're like me, you can't stop thinking about it. It's annoying and it's bothersome and you want to do everything you can to get it out of your shoe. Now, I'm not saying to be uncomfortable and bothersome, but when you give somebody something that just sticks with them, 
you know, kind of like a song that gets stuck in your head. You, know, you keep singing it over and over. You know, it pokes them in a good way. How can we use this? Well, think about your relationships. Is there a problem somebody's facing that you could use scripture to help them with? Are they talking about spiritual issues, leaving openings for you to interject some questions and answers? Do they struggle with something that you've struggled with that you can help them with? All these things are avenues to begin to put a stone in their shoe so that they begin to start that journey towards faith. As you think about your transforming relationships, think about how you can place a stone in somebody's shoe so that they will be able to think more of Christ and his love for them and your love for them so that they can become saved.